Welcome to Voice Bootcamp, a global name in unified communication. Hello, my name is Faisal Khan, CEO and founder of VoiceBootcamp.com. In this series of do-it-yourself self-study kit for Cisco PCC deployment, we're going to discuss about preparing the PG and CUCM to communicate with each other. Now, when you deploy the solution now we we have seen that the pcc take care of a lot of integrations that we otherwise have to do manually and it, it it's configured the pg for you it does the router logger and everything but there is still a lot of configuration that needs to be done to manage the system before you can start making the first phone call so what we're going to do is we're going to first work between the call manager and the pg and in the future lab i'm going to show you how to configure the pg and the cvp all right, now first thing first, you're gonna log in to your uh, PC uh, admin page. And what, one of the first thing you want to do is verify by going to the peripheral gateways. Now, these are your peripheral settings. As you can see, the first one that is created, that is your call manager. Um, again, you notice how you cannot change any of the settings right here. It is also recommend not to change anything from the C, uh, PG gateway either, because the whole idea about this is that once this is set, it should work with just a minor configuration. So it tells you the peripheral ID, the routing client ID, as well as uh, routing uh, type is an internal voice. <coughs> So any call that is coming in from call manager to the contact center, you will be treating that call as an internal call. But if the call is coming from CVP to call manager, sorry, UCCE, then we will be treating that call as an external call. Now the most deployment, the call flow is from the vo external network, let's say PSTN, to your SIP gateway internally. And then from the SIP gateway to your CVP and then CVP directly to the ICM. Whereas if you have an internal requirement to have employee dialing into the contact center, then they will be treating as internal call. Now, of course, that is just a, a routing domain label, by the way. Uh, we have another PG called MRPG that is for making an outbound uh, dialing and uh, multi-channel um, applications, which is currently being unused at this stage. And the third one is your VRU PG. That is the PG that we're going to use to communicate with CVP. So your PG setups, if you want to verify, you can always verify by going to the PG uh, server. And there, what we're going to do, run the framework protocol to make sure that it is registered or active with the call manager. Now, in the previous lab, we have verified that, but just let's just confirm and verify. Now I always make sure refresh it so that it, it is the most current one. And as you can see, both of them are active. All right, now in call manager, <coughs> what we have is under user management, you will see the application user and the wizard has created an application user called PG user. And this particular user is what is used by the PG server to authorize with the call manager. Now if I scroll down, these are all the CL, um, I guess, uh, the permissions that are required. Standard CTI allow, allow call monitoring, call control of the phone, supporting everything. So make sure that these are the groups that are available. Most people I have seen, they always use a CTI enable only, but you wanna make sure that these are allowed so that appropriate devices are supported and permissions are granted. Now we have three phones that are acting as agent phone. Uh, sorry, three phones that are acting as a um, uh, four call manager phone. So what we're going to do, we're going to use the last two phone as an agent phone. So we're going to associate those two phone with this particular user, except the first one, the 11 that you see. That is going to be uh, a less, we're going to pretend that that happens to be a caller. So we're going to make sure that that phone is not associated with the PG user. So that's the very first step that we're going to do. <coughs> Second thing we're going to do is going to create, remember the application user, user is created. If you want internal people to route a call from call manager to the UCCE, then we must create an, a CTI route point. Now again, most deployment, you will have the call routed via the PG, but uh, CVP, but we're going to create a CTI route point. 
So let's call this uh, help desk. You can maybe call it internal. And we're going to add <coughs> the number, let's say, I don't know, 2000. So this is a number the internal people will dial to access your call center internally. And if it does go to UCCE, remember the routing domain, it is going to be internal as a routing domain. Domain. Okay, perfect. And so now that my user, uh, sorry, uh, CTI route point is created, we need to associate this CTI route point with the PG user. So we need to make sure the help desk is also associated with this user. So let's go ahead and save. Now in order for us to get this CTI route point, which is currently you see is not registered, we need to actually go back to the administration page, go to manage and we're going to go dial number. <clears throat> so as you can see, there is no dial number. So we're going to add a new dial number. The dial number is going to be 2000 and we have a choice internal and external. Remember uh, that one, anything coming from the call manager is going to be an internal routing type. Okay. Uh, right now we can use the built-in um, call type, but we're going to just leave it as now as it is. We're going to map it through the alternative way. Now, because we choose 2000 as, uh, as, as a dial number and the routing client happens to be internal, remember only call manager is registered to the internal. So we're going to save that. And the moment we do this, we can go back here and refresh. Voila. See, it's registered. Okay, so now we have we can literally dial the number and have the call coming in. So let me see if I could register my phone. So I got three phones right here registered. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna register the first, all three. Phone one, oh sorry, phone one, phone two, phone three, phone type 7965 for all model. And of course, my IP address of my call manager, which is this. So now, if I open uh, these phones, phone one, phone two. By the way, I'm using an application called Multi uh, IP Blue Multi Lab, which is a fantastic application for uh, doing quick test. You can use a evaluation copy. So I got two of my phones are registered, which, and I'm going to use a third phone. Remember that uh, phone one and phone, phone two and phone three happens to be the agent where the phone one is not. <clears throat> so in this scenario, I will put phone one, I think, Something is not right. Okay, so as you can see, these two phone are uh, okay. I open phone one twice, so I'm supposed to open phone two. Okay, so this is my phone. Okay, so phone one is going to be the user, and phone two and phone three are my agent. So just to make sure I can dial each other, all good, all good. all good so again if you refresh the phone all phones are registered from the same laptop of course so now if we were to dial this number obviously at this stage nothing is going to work because we don't have anything associated with 2000 so let's see if <clears throat> we can make some sort of magic so what we want to do is we want to be able to call that number uh, let's say between these two system if i call from my phone one i want I, i'm going to call the extension 2000 
and I want one of this phone to ring. I don't care which one. I want one of this phone to ring for now. Now we in order to in order for us to do that, we must create a label. Okay, so in PCC we will not be able to create the label. Uh, as you can see, I'm going to settings, and then underneath there, there's labels. Uh, there is not much options that is available for us to create labels. So let me try a few more time. So what we're going to do, we're going to create an agent. So we're going to go to device, uh, manage, agent. So let's call this fcon, device all con, agent, fcon ID, test agent. Okay, no team at this moment. We're going to set the password. Cisco, Cisco. Ah, uh, the heck with Cisco voice bootcamp voice bootcamp all right so we're gonna save that agent id format is correct incorrect maybe it's looking for id uh one two one one nine so it's looking for id rather than agent name so the way it's set up is that you must enter user id so i'm gonna say one 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 four digit id okay so now i must create a skills group for now we'll just call this pre-sales and we're going to sign the member fcon into that group perfect okay so i have my agent i have my group and let me see if i can log in as that agent so i'm going to go to my home uh, device so it says finesse it's a little this little uh, launch finesse administration I'm just going to open that uh, i'm going to remove this cf admin from the link it should take me to the agent login page <coughs> okay so as you can see that I have my a phones are registered so remember I must use phone one and phone two so let's see what happened so seven two one one nine is the agent ID password voice bootcamp and extension let's try four one zero two four one zero two oh is my ID correct let me check Sorry, uh, agent ID was basically a numeric number. Agent username is Fcon. My apology. Uh, it's a bit late night, so kind of uh, losing my mind. So agent ID is supposed to be basically a uh, numeric number that is either automatically generated or you manually enter ID. So we're going to use a username, of course, to log in. So Fcon, password, voice, bootcamp. <coughs> Now, you may have to go through some certificate related uh, steps, uh, depending on uh, whether you're using a self certificate or public certificate. So it's going to give you some warning that you must accept the certificate. So there you go, it says following certificate should be accepted. So you click on OK, uh, you're going to click OK. And it's going to close this browser back to the previous one and you are now signed in as agent f con uh, faisal con with the id 11111 with extension now let's just log out for now and what i'm going to do as you notice i'm going to use phone one okay phone one to log in so let's see if it allows me to do that but instead of phone two i'm going to use phone one and it's, tell, it's telling you the device associated with that extension is not valid. That means that because we did not associate that phone with the PG user, this phone is no longer, it's not an agent phone. So we can't really use that phone in order to log in. 
but I can use phone 2 if I want, phone uh, 3 for example. So one good thing about UCCE is that you get to use any phone, agent get to use any phone, they don't have to be associated with their user account, all they have to be is use, associated with the PG account. So now I have a phone that is a ready state. Now of course to make a call I must create a script, right? That is just very common sense. So I'm going to use the script editor right here. And I'm going to create a very basic script. So I'm going to say, yeah, I don't like that. New script, routing script. Let's do a very basic. And I am going to say select. And I'm not going to use select. I'm going to use a skills group. connect the call to skills group and I'm going to say okay choose an agent from the skills group called sales pre-sales as you can see skills group name and the route name is pretty much the same uh, in UCC full admin full uh, version uh, it's just whenever you create a skills the system allows you to create a route with a different name and associate the name with the, uh, with the route with the services whereas in PCC it does not allow you to that uh, do that all right so I have created and as long as an agent available, it should ring that agent. So I'm going to call this PCC lab one. Now that I have, I'm going to validate my script and I need to map this script to the built-in because that's the only call type that I have right now. So let's try it. All right. <clears throat> schedule daily 24 hours whatnot actually let me let me go and create a skills uh, a call type okay so here's the call type and the built-in so let's just create one call uh, voice call type Keep it default. And once it's done, you may have to close the script. Do not again like this option. Let's reopen that script. And we're going to now to the uh, manager. I should see the voice CT. All right, do you notice one thing? If you are using the PCC deployment, there is no option called schedule, uh, sorry, um, there was typically two type of uh, call type manager you have. So this is a limit uh, because the PCC is slightly one of the tab is missing. Uh, I believe that is the um, call type um, tab. So I'll have to double check it. It's been a, a while. So anyway, I'll uh, go come back to come back to that for, for in a minute. So this is your uh, script. You're gonna run 24 hours. Click on save. Now, oh yes, dial mapping dial number mapping so we need to now go back to PC see the dial number 2000 we're gonna change the call type we're gonna make sure voice CT is mapped to that call type yes from the script you should be able to map as well which was missing from the PCC setup okay so what I want to do I don't know why this is coming like this that's fine. Monitor the script. Let's dial the number. Well, it might it might make sure my agent is logged in. I will dial from 4000 2000 for phone one. Voila. Phone rings this phone. And as you can see the phone call came into my PCC. It resolved the agent. I can answer the call and that's it. That's, it, that's, it, that's, it, that's it. Okay, so this is your first lab of how to customize the PG and call manager to communicate with PCC.